Italian-born Christina Vane arrived in the U.S. and instantly saw her dreams realized. After a cross-country tour in her new homeland, nowhere sounded lovely. She's seen gold upon the mountain, she's drank silver from the fountain, and now on Marquee Backstage, she's wishing once again. This is Christina Vane. Someday I know I'll be ready when it's time to go in someday soon. And no, it can't be long. You'll catch me complaining when I'm six feet in the ground. I was born in Italy, actually, and I grew up mostly in France, but I lived in Italy and England. We moved around a lot, and I came to the United States when I was 18 for college, and I was always really into music. I sang in the crib, like, I don't know when it started, it just was always, I always sang along the stuff in the car and was in choirs um, throughout school. I played the piano. I love and loved music. Um, I was really into like rock and punk and metal and just kind of always daydreamed about being like in a band. And most of my idols were classic rock bands, so I kind of subconsciously I think modeled my dreams as like the rock star dream, which is funny because now I play like American folk music and. But when you, you know, if you've seen me with my full band, I like, I like to rock out, which is, I think, where that comes from. And yeah, so I picked up guitar in middle school in Italy, and I went and took some voice lessons for a few years, too, at that little school. Went to college for liberal arts here in the States, and didn't, I thought I might want to do music, but my school's program was kind of like not. It was more geared towards classical and jazz, it seemed, and I didn't want to do that. I wanted to write my own songs. I had started writing songs in high school. So it's been kind of like a really long, windy road since then because I sort of got, was already playing slide, realized that, you know, this is in the genre, which was very convenient. I fell in love with the genres and like started working at a guitar shop in Los Angeles where I lived after college that was like very folk oriented so there somebody suggested the banjo and um, finally I think junior year I was like if I'm gonna be a musician I should probably see if gigging is up my alley so I went home to London and did my first string of gigs that's like very easy to pinpoint because it was you know I was playing weekly gigs at this bar in London in Camden and they had like two stages and the main stage indoors. After my show, the booker was this nice French girl. She was like, hey, you should stay. This next band's really good. So I did. And it was Sam Green and the Midnight Heist. And um, that's where I saw this guy, Sam Green, playing lap slide. And I thought that was like the coolest thing I'd ever seen. So I got interested in slide guitar and I was too lazy to, to do the lap stuff. So I learned that you could play bottleneck where you don't have to turn your guitar. and and that's just like, yeah, it just captivated me. I just don't, you know, I vividly remember being like, I need to learn how to make slidey sounds. And it was this one song in particular, it's uh, Miles Away From Home. And it has this lick that I could literally, I could play it on my guitar. It's like the first thing I tried to learn with it. I was like, ding, 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 ding. Then when I found the slide guitar, I sort of found my voice. Pray for 
your mothers all that they do the blind lead the blind and that is how i'll follow you time passes on old wounds as if they were brand new waiting to remit all the bad parts too old ma wooden legs but you know that she can dance i know the ring her neck if they catch her here again over in omaha the sky sits on the gray stories of blindness whispered across the plain some of my regrets after was not having gone to music school and like I'm meeting all these people from Berkeley and wishing that I had done that because you know I feel like I'm playing catch-up a lot here in Nashville especially I think that I was surrounding myself with external goals and I just felt like I wasn't achieving anything because I wasn't doing that and I was like I want a manager and I, I didn't know I was very green you know and I, I just thought that like those were markers of success and that so therefore I wasn't successful and I had a really hard time for a while where I was like you know what am I doing should I go get like a real job or do something else and and maybe this isn't for me and I remember posting about that on my on my Instagram which at the time was a pretty small following of people um, and I was just kind of posting my journey for guitar and banjo and and I uh, remember there was like an outpouring of support for for such a small <laughs> Group. I think it was like maybe 5,000 people were following me at the time or something and it felt like so much more than that because all these people really uh, just took it upon themselves, total strangers a lot of them, you know, to comfort me and make me feel like what I was doing was important in some way. So I kind of like just had this moment where I realized I think I needed to just change something and um, and that involved getting out of Los Angeles. So I went on a five month tour around the country out of my car, like sublet my apartment and uh, yeah, and hit the road. What I think is cool about touring at the smaller level, especially solo, is that you start to um, get into this like really old archetype of the traveler and you know, the way you uh, receive a traveler back in the day like walking a weary land was very different than how you might receive someone now if they knock on your door like a stranger you'd be like what but when you get out to smaller towns and more rural places it is more like that I do feel like if I had been in, a, in that town and I just knock on someone's door I was like hey uh, can I like you know pitch my tent in your yard at least all my stuff I know where it is it's like it people are like 
very open and I've, I've gone to bars not knowing where I'm gonna stay that night and literally been like, hey, you know, just start asking around. And sure enough, someone will be like, oh, me and my wife, you know, we're both like actors. We understand the touring lifestyle. You should stay with us. That just happened on this last tour. Having these like one-off experiences um, has just become such a treat instead of like, oh my God, now how I have to figure out how to do this again. It's sort of just like, wow, I might never do that again, but it was like the coolest moment of my life. The last tour I went on, I got to sing a song to a bison, like, because it's, um, his mom had died, so this bison had been raised, bot bottle fed by the ranch owner. The rest of them were wild, like you couldn't go anywhere near them, but this dude would come up to the truck and this giant animal and he's like, yeah, get out. And my friend had a camera and I just like sang my song to him, terrified the whole time, Billy the Bison. But like stuff like that where I have moments, you know, I'm in this plane in Wyoming in a herd of bison in my little dress with my guitar. I'm like, this is cool. You know, like music has brought me to some very, very cool places. Some of those like external markers, once you stop focusing on them, they just start coming to you if that's what you really want. And I feel really lucky. Like I got to open for Bob Weir and Winona Judd at the Fillmore. And that was like just the coolest thing I've ever done. You know, I am normally playing breweries and bars and there's nothing wrong with that. The other highlight gig wise would probably be this summer opening for Town Mountain. They're a, a jam grass, like bluegrass band that I really love. And it was just that, this crazy, like, you know, I liked one of their, someone showed me their music like a year ago and I got hip to it and did a cover and they saw it and they were like, do you want to open for us? And I was like, yeah. Stuff like that where that's really affirming because when I'm given the space to, um, to, to be bigger, you know, I can be. That land's salt and earth People, they gather like dead birds My land, my rocks, my dirt Oh, don't you take my gun from me Oh, don't you Take my gun from me. You can run, you can hide, but out here they're always watching. You can see for miles when the wind blows you.
A big problem for me my whole life has been where I'm from or not from because I'm not really from anywhere and nationality and identity is a thing that's so important to so many people and it sometimes gets tiring always learning about someone else's culture and never having your own to share. Um, and I have my own cultures, but that's the thing, it's not simple. Like my mom is Guatemalan and my father is Italian American, but we have Sicilian family and I was born in Europe. And we lived in the, those different places. And if I go back to those places, I'm not fully French or fully Italian enough for them, but I come here and I don't know what people are talking about half the time, even though I sound and look very American. And there's that thing I mentioned earlier about being like, it's kind of exhausting, always being uh, the outsider. And even though I'm not fully French or anything like that, that's the culture I was raised in. And even things like spatial awareness or how you say hello to someone or what you do, it's like I've gotten used to it here, but there's still moments where I'm like misunderstood or I feel like people are rude, even though that's just how stuff is or stuff like that, where it can just be tiring to like constantly be, oh, you do this like this here? That's so cool. Um, but then people look at you sideways when you do it your way because I'm like, well, we don't do that in France, you know, or whatever. Um, so it's, it's, um, it's tough and I like really miss the food a lot. I don't think I would ever say I've regretted coming here because I've stayed and I like it and I am, I am part American so I don't, I, you know, people have a funny way of expressing themselves when it comes to that and they forget that I like I have a passport and I'm from here in my own right just because I didn't grow up here doesn't mean it's not mine too. There's moments like that where I'll be like ah you know maybe maybe at, at some point I need to go back to a place where I'm better understood um, and then there's other moments where I'm like oh there's just a lot of stuff I don't like over there too you know and there's a great sense of freedom and there's beautiful beautiful things about American culture and that's why I'm here. So that journey, I think, kind of connected me to my American side, which just for the longest time, even though I went to school here, you know, I didn't really nurture very much. It's kind of hard to when you're just going like every couple of years to see your extended family in Connecticut. You know, it's sort of like Connecticut's great, but <laughs> when you're in Utah or in Moab or Wyoming or any of these like amazing places, it was so cool. And then meeting and understanding like, what is Iowa? What is that, like who lives there? Why, you know, what kind of people? What are the mannerisms? What's the food like? And all these micro cultures was really interesting for me after I realized that, you know, there was a place where all these musics that I'm really into um, are sort of the history is, is here, it's in the South. You know, Appalachian folk music is really what I love on the banjo, and then the slide guitar, the Delta, is right underneath. I'm three hours from Clarksdale, which is like the home of the Delta Blues and the Crossroads and all that, and I've played music down there, and like, you know, I didn't take to traditional French music, I took to traditional American music, because it's awesome, and it has a hold on globally, I would say, you know, it's big followings for old time even in Sweden and places like that, so. Uh, I want to give credit where it's due and not, I never want to make it sound like, you know, I'm putting down the place that I choose to live or that has given me so much culturally. But yeah, there are definitely some times that I'm reminded, especially by other people too, whether it's in a comment or in their behavior, that I'm not from here. And uh, it, it sucks when those moments happen because I'm like, oh, well, fine. I'll go back to the place where I can eat baguettes every day. <laughs> Um, but I don't, you know, I stay here and I have a lot to do here, but I don't really know what the future holds in that regard. I don't think I can progress the way I want to progress um, in Europe right now. But if I got to a place where I was happy with that side of my musicianship, I might consider going over there and trying to make a life for myself closer to like my family.
Well, I wipe my weary eyes I'm cutting all these ties Sometimes I work and I don't know what it's for Gonna get some brand new wings A pretty bird that sings Cause sometimes I'm too tired to sing it all Sometimes I Me. Hey.